today. Um, it is our great pleasure to be back in Portland and reporting to you again. Um, as LaVon said, I'm, I'm Julie Rulin with OIR Group, and Mike Janako and Rob Miller are here with me. Uh, the auditors tasked us with reviewing a total of 18 critical incidents involving Portland police officers. Uh, 17 of those are officer-involved shootings. One is an in-custody death. Rather than uh, present you with a several hundred page report that perhaps none of us could get all the way through, we decided to break that task up into three separate reports. And this first re report, uh, as the auditor said, covers seven officer-involved shootings um, that we grouped around a common theme. We tried to, to group these. That these seven shootings cover a span of six years from 2004 to 2010. Six of them were fatal shootings, um, shootings involving James Jahar Perez, Raymond Gwerter, Jerry Goins, Jason Spohr, Aaron Campbell, and Jack Collins. The seventh uh, shooting was a non-fatal shooting of Leslie Stewart. Um, as I said, we, we tried to find some common themes among the 18 incidents uh, to break these reports down. And with, with one exception, uh, all seven of the, the cases that we report on here have, um, have to do with subjects who are in some kind of mental health or emotional crisis. The seventh case, uh, the Perez shooting, is from 2004. We were still hearing a lot of people talk about that shooting and felt like uh, an outside review of that case was already long overdue and we did not want to wait any longer, so we included it in this first grouping. Um, during the course of our review of these incidents, we had the opportunity to spend some time with the Bureau and to learn about some of the uh, efforts that the Bureau is making to try to impact the day-to-day -day interactions between the police and the mentally ill and the mental health community. A number of these shootings, um, and, and plus the um, death of Mr. Chassie, which we had the opportunity to review and report to you on in 2010, resulted in a, 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 spurt, a sort of spirit of cooperation between the Bureau and the mental health community. And a couple of those developments that I just wanted to talk about briefly, one is the um, mobile crisis unit um, that is a sort of innovative partnership that pairs a, pairs a Portland police officer with uh, a project respond clinician with the goal of reducing the number and frequency of police interactions with mentally ill. It sort of brings, a, by bringing a different set of resources and a, and a multidisciplinary approach, um, the goal is to, to reduce the, the number of contacts. Um, the mobile crisis unit does not roll to, does not insert itself and by design does not get involved in critical incidents. But it's sort of um, seen as a diversion program, if you will, where the goal is, you know, where somebody who might otherwise be taken into custody, be taken to jail, would be connected to services um, and avoid that interaction with the criminal justice system. And hopefully, the, you know, the goal is that in avoiding those contacts that are aimed at arresting somebody, you also can reduce the, the force incidents that sometimes come out of those interactions. Um, another development and, and progress that we've seen is with the crisis intervention training that the Bureau does. Uh, I'm, you may remember that after the death of Mr. Chassie, the Bureau made a commitment to get all of its officers CIT training. And uh, when they went about doing that, um, they worked very closely with Project Respond, and there was a psychologist at Project Respond who, along with others, helped them revamp their CIT training program and got uh, a large number of officers trained in a very short period of time.